Hello there, Sarah from 17 once again. This is Darksiders 2, Apocalyptic Difficulty video walkthrough, and we're in the Tomb of the Pharisee. And this room coming up is one of the hardest rooms on the game. And you'll notice immediately I've gone into Super Psycho Scythe mode. I think it's called Reaper Form, just to do some as much damage as I can to these enemies. The room itself is filled with boxes that have got a ton of potions in them, just in case you you know you start dwindling on resource. But the fight begins with two of the females, which are some of the more challenging enemies on the game. And one strategy is to just space them and shoot them with the gun, but it takes forever, and I wasn't going to do that. So you'll notice I'm using my my cheap uh, Sonic Boom gauntlets because I love them, and they just make it much more fun and much more, shall we say, safe to to do this kind of encounter with. Because I don't know a good strategy to fight these women, I don't know, you know, the win move against them. Because this is not a game that I've, I've really looked up to see if there is any, you know, super effective strategies against things. And I had a similar... Oh, did you notice uh, another one of the ladies has spawned? I think it's when you kill one, another one comes in. So, not only was two of them a bad news, now there's three of them. And the problem with this is... If you try and go into their guns blazing, mashing buttons, they'll sequence their attacks and they'll kill you before you know where you are. And when one of them hits you, it makes you flinch. And while you're flinching, you take damage, so they can actually stun lock you. And there's times when I've been killed in a second and not even known where it's come from. And it's it's one of the definite difficulty spikes on this game because, like I've mentioned, the combat is nowhere near as finessed as as a Devil May Cry or a Ninja Gaiden. And a lot of the times the game feels easy, other times you'll hit something like this where it feels difficult. And look right now, look what's happening. One of them is aggroing on me and two of them are not doing anything. What does that even mean? Why did that happen? And that's one of the things I don't get about this game. I can show you maybe five or six deaths in this fight where all three of them were constantly on me. They never give me any space and yet just then... I was able to kill one of them, and then they, they commenced their attack on me. And you'll notice another one spawned in, so it's back to 3v1. And it's, it's inconsistencies like this, where the game just doesn't make sense. And there's a fight coming up called the, the Psychameron, which anybody who's done it on Apocalyptic knows it's one of the worst fights of the game, because they throw two stalkers at you, and two stalkers at you is the developer's way of telling you to fuck off and die. Because that's all that generally happens, because it's, it's just a terrible design. And uh, what ends up happening is one of the stalkers just sits in the corner and lets me beat the other one up. And when you're versing one of them, they're easy, because you just dodge them and kill them, and it's that simple. And I don't get it, because every other fight, they were so mercilessly on me, it's almost as if they gifted me the victory, and, I, and I, I really don't understand that. But once you've killed the women, this guy turns up, and this guy's dangerous too. And he's dangerous because I can't figure out... A, a, an effective way of killing him fast. So, if you do know a good way of killing these enemies really quickly, please leave a comment for, for anyone else who might be struggling with the game when they watch this video, because my strategy is literally dodge and then attack, and it takes forever to kill them. So it's not effective, it's just functional at best. And uh, there's probably a, a super easy way of doing it, I just never figured it out or forgot and, you know, didn't remember. But couple of things I said I was going to talk about in this video from the last video to get everyone excited with my mock Dragon Ball Z announcer voice uh, were 15th of January Devil May Cry comes out which I'm covering and I'm going to be covering a lot of it like the entire game now, I'll be doing a guide for it but I'll also be doing much much more uh, I'll probably uh, I might do a playthrough like a live playthrough like I did with Devil May Cry because it's a game that I'm going to be playing a ton and I might as well share some of my journeys with you. Uh, I might do some kind of challenge run of it, I might do a guide and then a, a, a triple S guide, something like that. I'm not too sure yet because I've not played it and I can't really judge you know, the facets of, of what I can make videos with but I'm going to try and help as many people as I can and anybody who likes the game is going to have a lot of content to look forward to. After that we, we hit February February is a very busy month. Not only is Death Space 3 coming out, but so is Metal Gear Solid. Uh, Metal Gear Rising Revengeance, sorry. So that's two games I'm definitely covering. Uh, Metal Gear, I've seen an achievement on it, which is Becoming a Lightning God, I think it's called, where you, you have to get an S rank 
on the hardest difficulty of the game. So S rank the game on its hardest difficulty and I can't even S rank the demo on normal. <laughs> because it doesn't give you an ending rank for some reason. I've managed to S rank every encounter except for the boss because I always fuck up on the boss for some reason, it doesn't make any sense. And I think, uh, and the gecko fight, everything else I'm, I'm okay with. And I don't know how the, the ranking works, that's the main reason why I suck at getting the ranks on that game. I don't know how the game works if I'm honest. I, I just chop people up, that's literally it. I counter, they chop them up and try and get the Zandatsu and that's it. So I'm hoping that there's a lot more depth and strategy to the scoring. I hope it's not just waiting for counters. But that's what I'm hoping to do with the guide. Because to me, that sounds like an awesome challenge. It's going to be a great game. And it looks like something that people will enjoy to watch. And hopefully will help a lot of a lot of people get that achievement. Because if it's as hard as, as it could be, and let me tell you now, guys, it could be hard. It could that guy could do a lot of work for me and as much as I like entertaining people but I also like building my channel and it's one of those things where difficult games and you know much needed videos work much better than the ones I enjoy making maybe or ones that you know are more frivolous so it could be it could be really really good and Dead Space 3 I mean Dead Space 3 is full circle for me because my first real guide was Dead Space 2 and the sad fact about that now is anybody that wants to go back to see how far I've come will notice it's now got a bunch of music on it, like classical music and stuff. And while it's still good gameplay, because it was a good guide, it doesn't have my commentary, it doesn't have my early commentary, it doesn't have anything. And the videos are diminished because of that. So it's kind of sad. But Dead Space 3, uh, I will learn from past mistakes and I will hopefully make a really good guide. I'm hoping that the dev doesn't do anything stupid with checkpoints again. I'm hoping hardcore's not the massive pulling point, because if I'm completely honest, I thought it was shit on the second game. And my guide will not be on that difficulty anyway. Because I come from the Seraphim 17 school of thought, which dictates that removing checkpoints does not a difficulty make. And I think it's completely stupid, and it's something that we should drop like a bad habit. Because I... I I just I don't understand it at all. I really don't. And the games that I enjoy the most are the games that get difficulty right. And Dead Space 2 unfortunately got dis difficulty wrong. And um, I don't know if it'll be called Zealot. Because I, I actually like Dead Space 1's difficulty. I thought Impossible was great. Or Impossibility. Whatever they called it. It was, it was a pretty good name. I'd not seen that before. And uh, they didn't use it for the sequel. Which was strange. But the cool thing about Dead Space 3 is it's going to be co-op and the co-op's going to change the game so it gives me an excuse to play co-op and because Resident Evil 6 turned out to be you know an abortion of a game I'm probably going to record a co-op run of, of Dead Space as well I don't know how it'll be different uh, maybe it'll be a challenge run with me and Aiden because we like to do that kind of thing I don't know it'll be something interesting it'll be something worth watching and hopefully uh, the people will enjoy it and then the month after that, I believe, is Bioshock Infinite, which takes precedence over everything, because if you didn't know this, um, Irrational Games, I think the name is, uh, the developer, is it Ken Levine? I think the name of the, the creative dev is, the director, guy. He does not make bad games, he makes brilliant games, and also, he does not milk games. He takes his time, he makes the game he wants to make, and then he moves on, and that is the best kind of design in my eyes. And I do think that that game is going to be absolutely amazing. And I cannot wait for it. And the guide is going to be whatever I can make it, but hopefully it's something very, very special. But yeah, I'm, I'm stoked for that when it comes out. And past that, I'm not too sure of the releases. Um, I'm currently going to be playing through Zone of the Enders Second Runner to see if, if I can make a, a walkthrough for it. The only things that you know delay me in doing it is A, the game is hard. I know it's hard because I've played it before, and I am rusty, so it's going to take me a while to get back to the skill level I was at when I originally played it. And there is no achievement or trophy for doing the game on harder difficulties, let alone the hardest. So it's probably not going to get as much attention as I would like, which is a shame because it's a fantastic game. But the main thing that's you know made it so that I'm not sure if I'm covering the game is the frame rate. 
So when I did the Zone of the Enders 3 video, which has got a really funny annotation on it because the amount of people, I say people, I mean retards, that commented on the video complaining that it wasn't Zone of the Enders 3 content because Zone of the Enders 3 content doesn't exist. Fucking idiots. But they complained about the... <laughs> about the video, on that video anyhow. Uh, I, I basically mentioned that when I played the game... Uh, at the convention for the PlayStation, the frame rate was horrendous at all times. Every single time I did the swarm attack, the entire introduction, the frame rate was terrible. It was awful. It was really awful. And I'm not usually somebody who notices frame rate, and this frame rate was awful. So it was almost unplayable, and it really put me off the game. And playing it at that convention has made it so that I've had, I've had that game now two weeks and I've not played it because I'm afraid it's going to be shit because of the port is terrible and the reviews have all said that the port is bad they've all said that the frame rate is bad they've said it's worse on PlayStation which is insane because it's a PlayStation game what is that? I, I don't get it but the worst thing I've seen about the game is apparently it runs better on the PS2 and it runs good on the PS2 but it don't run great so... I'm just a little bit worried that I'm not going to enjoy it and it's one of my favourite games of all time so uh, I'm delaying it for, for good reasons but I am going to bring content from it it's just I don't know if it's going to be a guide I hope it is because it's a great game but we'll see, it's not off the table and there are other guides that I should have made that I haven't, that I don't know if I will be making for instance Metal Gear Solid 3 I don't know if that's happening I want it to but it's all about time and it, it's one of those situations right now where I'm pretty much going to have to get a job I don't want to continue trying to find a job I do want and it's going to limit my ability to, to focus on YouTube which is you know, an unrealistic dream at the best of times so I need to really pick, you know, pick, my, pick and choose my time wisely so I don't know if that's going to ever come to light but, you know, I never say never. I'm not Sean Connery. Oh, I often say never, but never in the concept of not doing something. For instance, uh, a lot of people have been asking for a Devil May Cry 4 guide. And I do realise that it's a good thing for me to make. Not only is that one of the, you know, the highest requested things on any channel, but particular by my kind of style. Because if you search on YouTube... Devil May Cry 4 is covered so extensively it's almost ridiculous. But what you don't see is anybody who's average at the game. You don't see anyone... Well, you sorry, you do see people average at the game, but you don't see people that are in the spot between really good and just ridiculous. It's either people that aren't too great, or it's people that are so good you, you doubt that they've ever smelled a female because they're too good. And there's no contrast. And one thing that's almost exclusively missing is good gameplay and commentary. And one thing that a lot of people come to my channel for is my commentary. And for a particularly difficult guide, they come for it because they want to know how I did it and they want to hear my strategies so they can use them and hopefully be successful with them. And that is something that I could do extremely well on Devil May Cry Fox. I've put over 100 hours in the game and I know it well. But a little story that not a lot of people will probably know. By the way, this is a boss fight, as you can tell. But it's not particularly challenging. It's just a clusterfuck again. They've put a bunch of enemies that are going to try and maul you while the boss tries to do significant damage. Best way to do it is literally, you know, do the crowd control attacks. Make sure that you've got Reaper mode when you come in just in case to save your ass. Use your potions. Get your life back however you can. And uh, just pay attention how... I have almost no life and am yet still alive somehow, so just goes to show, no matter how high your life is or no matter how low it is, never give up, you can still, you know, be successful. But as I was saying, what not a lot of people know is Devil May Cry 4 was gonna be the first guide on my channel. And I've actually said this before on an older video, so if you remember me saying this, you know, you're proving your your tenure with the channel. But what happened is on the old Devil May Cry's, you could start on the ha Look at this! What an amazing cutscene. We've gone through the graphics and now we can't see what the hell is going on and have thus no context for the story. 
Thank you, Virgil. Thank you. Virgil? I meant Vigil. Um, but anyhow, on All the Devil May Cries, you could go through on the hardest difficulty once you'd beat it on a new game, which meant you did not have the upgrades, you did not have the moves, and you were playing from a fresh save on the hardest difficulty, which is how I intend to usually make all my walkthroughs. I do not like to carry any kind of advantage into the guide, because if you're playing and you do not have it, my guide will not help you. That is the philosophy, that is what I adhere to, and you cannot do that on Devil May Cry 4. You cannot do that. The only way I could do it is if I started a new game, beat all the difficulties before Dante Must Die without buying anything, and then started recording the guide. And unfortunately, I just do not have the time to commit to something like that. And um, and thus, that's why it, it never happened. But uh, I'm tempted to go back and do perhaps a, a triple S rank on Dante Must Die to try and help some people. Because I, I know I can do it because I've already done it. But I don't know. It's one of those things where it's got to be worth doing. And... If I'm in a particular busy moment on in my life or whatever the hell's happening, what you guys don't get to see, sometimes I can't put all my effort towards this, especially when, essentially, you know, to the unsuspecting eye, this is worthless. <laughs> you know, this is this is not doing anything to me as a person, which I know and you guys know is completely untrue, but maybe not everybody else who is an influential part of my life. <laughs> you'd be surprised what you know what real life is like but thank you for watching and you take care now